This is Stone Cold Export, and in this video, we're taking a look at the cut down iGPU inside the Intel i5 11400. Can this new XE architecture be used for some light gaming? The i5 11400 iGPU, the UHD 730, is a bit more cut down than the one you find in the higher end Rocket Lake CPUs such as the 11500, which has the UHD 750, but I was curious how it would fare in a few different games, because, well, getting a discrete GPU is pretty much impossible these days. The test setups are as follows, the i5-11400 and the i5-10600K with the UHD 630 were tested on a Gigabyte Aorus C490 Elite AC with 16GB of 3200MHz CL16 memory, then we tested an AMD Ryzen R74700U in a Lenovo Yoga with its Vega 7 iGPU. Uh, this laptop features 16GB of LPDDR4X memory running at 4266 MHz, but the total bandwidth is similar to regular DDR4 300 MHz CL16. That CPU has 8 cores and 8 threads. Then we tested a laptop with a GTX 1050 with 4GB of video memory. That machine used an i5-6600K desktop CPU running at stock speeds with fairly slow 2133 MHz DDR4 memory. Because it was running on an H170 chipset. And we also tested a Radeon HD 6870 from over a decade ago to see if the iGPU could keep up with an ancient discrete GPU. Although the 1GB of VRAM at, uh, that this GPU has does become an issue in some titles. It was tested with the Ryzen R5 5600X on an ASRock B550M Pro 4 motherboard, so it should not see a CPU bottleneck. The games were tested at 1080p with medium, medium low to low settings, and we start off with Anno 1800 with low settings. Here the UHG 730i GPU was able to reach a 2.3 frames per second average, which is a pretty decent 32% uplift from the UHG 630 in the Comet Lake CPUs, although it does get blown away by the Vega i GPU in the Ryzen laptop, which was able to do 60.8 frames per second on average. This is 88% faster than the UHD 730 and 13% faster than the HD 6870, which suffers from the 1GB of VRAM along with drivers that lack optimizations for this game because these drivers haven't been updated for 5 or 6 years. The GTX 1050 is the clear winner here, both in terms of average frame rate but also when you look at the frame times. So the UHD 730 is delivering, I, I suppose you could call it playable, almost, at low settings, but yeah. Let's move on to the next game, Apex Legends. Here, neither Intel iGPU managed to break 30 frames per second with minimum settings at 1080p. The UHD 730 is about 22% faster than the 630, but it still gets embarrassed by the Vega 7 iGPU, which is 74% faster. But even that was not able to reach 60 frames per second, which is an absolute minimum in this game. The HD 6870 is once again limited by its 1GB of VRAM and drivers that hasn't seen an update in 5 or 6 years. The GTX 1050 delivered the most playable experience here, which is what we expected. Next is Dota 2 and here we use the second fastest preset. Both the Intel iGPUs delivered a good experience with the UHG 730 being 17% faster than the 630. The Vega 7 is still faster, but it's just 19% faster here, which is not a lot compared to some of the other games. And both the HD 78, uh, 6870 and the GTX 1050 is about 9% faster than the Vega 7 iGPU. However, you may notice the much better frame times of the 6870, and that is highly likely due to the much, much faster 5600X CPU compared to the stock 6600K that's in the laptop along with the 1050. Now let's test the uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I had to retest this because uh, I thought some of these results were a bit weird. Uh, however, it looks like in this particular title the UHD 630 is actually a bit faster than the 730, about 17%, and it may look as if I have reversed these numbers, but I retested and retested and retested and got the same result several times over, so it could be a driver issue that's causing it or something, but in any case, the Vega 7 
is over twice as fast and manages 90.3 frames per second on average, with frame times exceeding the Intel iGPU's average figures. The, HD, uh, the Radeon HD6870 is pretty much on par with the Vega 7 iGPU here, with slightly better frame times due to the CPU probably, but overall pretty similar performance. The GTX 1050 is a lot faster, 52% ahead of both the Vega 7 and the HD6870 and comes in at 138 frames per second on average. Moving on to Fortnite now, uh, here I tested uh, with DirectX 12 with the Vega 7 and the others performed best with DirectX 11. So the UHD 730 managed 37.6 frames per second on average, which is not really playable, but 50% faster than the UHD 630. The Vega 7 iGPU is delivering a playable experience at 71.7 frames per second on average, uh, which is 91% faster than the UHD 730 and 22% faster than the HD 6870. The GTX 1050 is about twice as fast as the Vega 7 iGPU in this game and is once again the clear winner. Overwatch is next and this game is pretty lightweight uh, and uh, still pretty popular. The UHD 730 did 45.1 frames per second on average, being 25% faster than the UHD 630, but it still falls short of that uh, 60 frames per second target. Uh, you can reach it if you lower the render resolution, but we are sticking to 100% here at 1080p. And once again, the Vega 7 is quite a bit faster at 64% ahead of the 730. And the HD 6870 is, is delivering uh, some pretty playable performance in this title with 129 frames per second average and pretty good frame times as well. So the 6870 is delivering good performance in Overwatch and it's 74% faster than the Vega 7 iGPU. Faster still though is the GTX 1050, which is 19% ahead of the HD 6870 and over twice as fast as the Vega 7. The last game we tested is The Sims 4. Here both the UHD 630 and 730 delivered the same performance, and the Vega 7 was only 9% faster than both in this game. The GTX 1050 was a bit limited by the CPU and memory in this DirectX 9 game and only did 63.5 frames per second on average. It was still 42% faster than the Vega 7, but taking the crown is the HD6870 at 81 frames per second on average. It is 28% faster than the GTX 1050 and this is probably or most likely due to the R5 5600X. Looking at the relative performance, we can see that the iGPU in these desktop Intel CPUs are mostly meant for office and troubleshooting work. I mean, you can play a few games with decent frame rates, such as Dota 2, but make no mistake, these iGPUs are not good for gaming. Which is a shame, given the current discrete GPU market, uh, the UHD 750 is probably a bit faster, but it should not be... It probably doesn't come close to the Vega 7, and uh, you could probably squeeze out a bit more performance by lowering the resolution to 720p, but at that point image quality takes a massive hit in my opinion, and I really don't think it's worth it, although maybe you don't have a choice. The UHD 730 improves slightly on the UHD 630, being on average 13% faster at 1080p, while the Vega 7 is 80% faster than the 730. So you can see that this uh, UHD 750 is probably still quite a bit slower than the Vega 7. Intel 2 has better iGPUs in their laptop CPUs, so it's a shame that they are not making it to the desktop, although I'm sure they have their reasons. The ancient HD 6870 is just 11% faster than the Vega 7 on average, uh, and the GTX 1050 is much faster than both of them. In conclusion, you can do some very light gaming on the iGPU in the 11400, but I don't think this will keep you happy until GPU prices drop, because AAA titles, they're out of the question. High refresh rate gaming, that's out of the question, and you're stuck at maximum 1080p, at, at which your target should be like 30fps or 60fps in lightweight titles or all games. A discrete GPU is the way to go, but getting a hold of one is an impossible task these days, so in the next video I'll be taking a look at the sub $200 used GPU to see if it's able to keep up with modern games at 1080p. Thanks for watching this one guys, and see you later.